so to bring out the detail of of the woven thongs making up the the back of the uh, serpents um, you can stain um, you can stain that one color and then sand off so that you have a the darker color highlighting the uh, the light back of, of the, uh, the strands whereas uh, as in this case I will uh, use a pyrograph tool and, uh, and so what we'll do here yeah, start up here perhaps is along the the edges of the thonging just burning it in it adds contrast given I won't be staining the serpent uh, feature So this leads the eye nicely. And of course, if you uh, if you go over and hit another part, that's easily uh, rectified by a bit of sanding uh, in the finishing aspect of it. So here we go, just uh, doing this little segment to give you a visual on how I go about all of this. Now, as always, with any artistic uh, endeavour, the finished product makes uh, makes sense out of the whole thing because uh, the eye and the beholder may not directly discern the uh, the uh, the vision that's being presented so when it's complete then uh, there, there might be oohs and ahs because you know what uh, what what uh, the artist perceives uh, before setting out to create, and then uh, and then, and, uh, then given the changes the changes that may occur along the way in, in the creation, um, is is really only revealed. To, uh, to others on completion of, of the project. I mean to say one can visualize someone's concept, but uh, you know, until you see it, you wouldn't uh, necessarily have, uh, have pictured it coming out in the same way, because uh, as we do the project, same project as each other, uh, they're never the same. Our interpretations of it vary, like fingerprints from person to person. So there, there we have um, the commencement of it. Let me just turn this off. I'll bring it forward. Oops. Mm, there you go.
Okay. So now that bit of a highlight through the burning process has made the uh, the pattern really stand out. So the whole length of the walking stick treated like this with negative spaces um, in the lozenges. Well, okay, so there are cats here and nothing there. Now I could fill it with with uh, various designs but in this case the two cats one on either either rotation uh, is, is all that's called for. What I will I will do up here under the serpent's heads is put the monogram of the person for which this walking stick is intended. I haven't decided yet whether to carve it uh, into as relief or or burnt or um, in high relief. We'll see. Cheers.
So here we got a bit of a trench already, so we have the raised back of the snake, and of course also a raised midsection between the braids, which we can carve designs into of any descriptions, or just leave as is. So you don't want to carve too deep into, into the wood because there's a point where the structural integrity of the stick, the branch before it becomes a stick, uh, is weakened. And bearing in mind that the object of this walking stick, or any walking stick, is to support the weight of a person to some extent between steps. So, so there we have a, a half decent sort of groove. Right, now, to ornament the back of, of the serpent, um, there's many ways of going about it, and um, I'm using the three-strand plat, the standard beaking period design. So to make it easier to see, the pencil on the dark isn't so easy and one can get lost. So using a black marker then we decide on where we go over and under like so. And the next one goes over there, under, and over and under. And we have the mid plat come in, and it's going under there, over there, under, over. So we have a continuum of unders and overs. <coughs> So, making sure that we actually remember what's what. So this is actually an over, goes under, goes over, right there. So, okay. So, using a ore carving blade, remembering it's got a two bits to it, fatter, longer blade, and smaller detailer. We'll use the small one for this, just to get started. So. To start the process, if we put the blade like so, dig in. So like chip carving, again, to explain. Slice away, and then lift that. And so we have a series of these these uh, spiky waves. Now, the spike 
that is at the tip of these you can round off if you if you need to have uh, a gentler flow to the pattern now of course all these carved bits get sanded later and so then you'll find that the, the sharp bits will soften or the apex will be rounded off okay, so we'll do the same thing on this side off now one pass will give you a depending on the width a half decent uh, depth of cut if you need to go deeper well okay second pass or as many passes as you need So, so that's the outline. Now, of course, these are unders and overs. So, and of course, you, you want to have a thonging, not just a line. You're not recessing along the line, you're leaving the lines as drawn exposed, raised, in other words. So, here we use chip carving technique. And making sure that we just go deep enough, not too deep. There you have it, I'm digging out a bit there. And it's never now. It's an idea to just just chip out the uh, the dead spaces as I say the spaces in between the raised thonging first so you have a easier um, effect to look at in other words you, you can actually see where you'll be going with more uh, definition than otherwise okay, so we dug out these little diamonds and so you can probably see already that there is a, a shape happening now so, this line here in the design is over. So, to clarify that, we'll gouge out a section of the topic as well. And, uh, now, so this goes over, so we'll just a bit in there and call the line along here and so you can see now that that's already raised so we'll do that along each this is a repeat pattern so Now, this then goes under and goes over the next one. So, therefore, make sure that we give the effect three dimensionally of just that.
so uh, it probably is a bit messy right now for you to see but uh, once I, I work it a bit more you'll see that this part goes over that section goes under and then goes over here so Just uh, make a look to make sure that we get that perspective in place. And so work our way down there. So this way we have the woven effect really well portrayed. So here we are. And we'll just give you a close up of how to go about carving the three plat, the three prong plat. Very ancient and the the ancient Vikings used it a lot. This is the ore carver. I'll use a small detail blade for uh, this point. Okay, so having marked out the design, as you can see, it goes this strand or thong goes under, over, under, over under and over and this is repeated and so you start off getting removing the the empty space so to speak and using chip carving method <laughs> 